So there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. Well, there is in another sense. There is a chemical imbalance in another sense. Every time you wake up in the morning, your body is not the same as it is at 9 a.m. And your body is different at 10 a.m. and at noon in that afternoon. I mean, for example, serotonin levels change throughout the day. Okay. And so your body is changing all the time. But, and of course, as I pointed out, as you get older, you have less of all these chemicals as you get older. Are we to assume that because now you have less melatonin than a baby mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. you have fewer catecholamines than a baby has, you have less dopamine than a small child has, are we to assume that you have a chemical imbalance? Well, if so, then every old person does. Every mm -hmm. old person. And everyone does at certain times of the day. So, okay. so you have to, you know, <laughs> when you talk about a chemical imbalance, you have to understand that our bodies are in a constant state of movement and flux. But the idea that it's a lack of serotonin okay. that causes depression. That's what I was getting. George Ashcroft in uh -huh. 1966 okay. is the fellow who really led to the whole idea that a lack of serotonin mm -hmm. causes depression. He published an article in The Lancet. The mm -hmm. Lancet is what I consider the best of medical journals. And he suggested that it was a lack of serotonin causing the, the depression in subjects. And then he researched that some more. Mm -hmm. By 1971, uh, 1970, mm -hmm. He had decided, no, it wasn't a lack of serotonin. He was oh. wrong. So the very fellow who first suggested that a lack of serotonin may cause depression is the very fellow who later said, I was wrong. It's not a lack of serotonin causing depression at all. There's no relationship between the two. But nevertheless, once he suggested that, mm -hmm. that opened a door. The pharmaceutical industry said, let's explore this one. Maybe we can develop another drug that would be a good seller. Uh, you must remember that during the 60s, the number one drug in America became... Valium. Valium, that's right. And so the patents on Valium and Xanax and all were going to run out eventually, and so you have to go to something else. And so we come up with serotonin as a possibility. And before it was ever released to the public, the pharmaceuticals yes. knew the truth. They knew it was not a lack of serotonin causing depression. But nevertheless, it was promoted. It was promoted so successfully that these drugs became the top selling drugs in the world, making the pharmaceuticals millions of dollars. Now, we ought to point out okay. that these drugs, these hormones, these neurotransmitters, and sometimes a neurotransmitter is a hormone, um, they in fact uh, are identified just because they were the first ones identified. Uh, you, you have no knowledge of neurotransmitters at the beginning of the 20th century. No one knew anything about them. All right. When you get to 1980, you have about six identified. Mm -hmm. Acetylcholine was the first one. That's 1921. Mm -hmm. uh, 1946 was norepinephrine. Oh, uh, 1948, okay. serotonin. And mm -hmm. so, you know, then we get GABA and dopamine and a few others. But the and point these are all is, neurotransmitters. These are all neurotransmitters. But the point is that these drugs, these, mm -hmm. uh, these chemicals, uh, these chemicals are just a few of what we now know is a large family of chemicals. We now have identified well over 200 neurotransmitters, mm. and yet all these ideas are centered back in the first ones that were discovered. That should tell us something. It's very simplistic. All these ideas are incredibly simplistic. They ignore reality. So anyway, George Ashcroft suggested mm -hmm. it was serotonin. George Ashcroft realized he was wrong published papers saying we are wrong. Nevertheless, the door is open. The pharmaceuticals promoted the drugs, and uh, the rest is history. American takes these drugs even today.